Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video on my server here. This is a Power Edge 2950. Um, that is the four or the the dual quad core variant. Uh, not the highest end, but the closest to the highest end. It's the 2.66 gigahertz. This particular model has 32 gigabytes of RAM and six one terabyte drives in a RAID 5 cons configuration with one one uh, drive as a redundant uh, uh, redundant rebuild drive so if one of them fails it'll rebuild that automatically uh, for backup I have the cyber power uh, I believe this is a thousand watt variant uh, this is actually interface with this so if the power goes out for more than 10 minutes it will gracefully shut down the virtual machines and the server itself if you'd like to know how to do that there will be a link in the description uh, with the video that I followed to do that. It's a very straightforward process. You basically deploy a virtual machine and install the uh, some kind of Linux based, I believe it's Linux um, based OS. It's very straightforward uh, and then you basically all you have to do after that is just link in the USB that that plugs into to that virtual machine and it works its magic. A ton of uh, settings to configure. Absolutely love it. Highly recommend that for servers. Highly, highly, highly recommend that. Um, so here, uh, I also have the fans on resistors. Forget exactly what wattage and resistance they are. I want to say 50 ohm, but uh, don't don't quote me on that. Uh, just look it up. There's forms and videos and all, all kinds of stuff on that. Uh, I found that the ones that they recommend are too high resistance because the fans will auto detect that they're spinning too slow and it'll just spool up and spool down and spool up and spool down. So get uh, the resistance that's just a tad lower than that. I believe it's uh, if it's 50, get like 47 ohm, and that will do the trick perfectly. Um, so on to configuration, if you are looking at getting one of these yourself, when you first get it, it's probably not going to have an OS on it, and if it does, it's probably going to be Windows 2008 R2. So I'm running VMware ESXi 5.5. Uh, this is the latest version, I believe. And it's extremely simple OS. It's Linux-based. Um, and I know when most people hear Linux, they go, Oh no, Linux, no, no, no. Uh, this is nothing to fear. This is very straightforward. I've been a Windows user pr practically all my life, and I found this very straightforward to use. Um, pretty much the only thing you're going to be doing here is configuring your password and your network. That's it. So you're going to want to configure your password. Uh, I believe it, it just comes with no password set, but you're going to want to set a password and then you're going to want to set static IP. In this case, I set the uh, yeah, IP configuration. In this case, I set to 192.168.1.50. I don't have any, I don't have 50 devices on my whole network, so that's that's never going to be taken. Uh, then the, the subnet mask and the default gateway are just the usual. You know. So keep that static so you can forward all the ports and whatnot. Um, and then that's that's pretty much it. You're gonna want to log out up there, and you're good to go. In fact, you can, if you'd like, you can disconnect your keyboard and monitor. I just keep it up just in case you know something takes a crap. My house has got hit by lightning two or three times since I've gotten this here, so uh, I've had to log into there a couple times to make sure everything's okay. So that's pretty much that. I just have that in here. Uh, the thing you're gonna want to keep in mind though is that the heat output on this thing is tremendous. Um, it only draws, let me, before we go, let me show you the wattage. It's only drawing about 300, the most I've seen it go up is like 380. Um, but typically it only draws that 333 watts. Uh, so it's, it's not too much considering how much power it does have, but it does put out a lot of heat. This room is a good two degrees, two, two to five degrees warmer than the rest of the house. So keep that in mind when you purchase, um, it's even hotter than this. This has a freaking Intel 930 overclocked at 4 gigahertz, and this thing outputs 
God, a quarter of the heat, not even an eighth of the heat. So keep that in mind. That, that thing is Xeon, and it's old Xeon. So, so anyway, so once you get that uh, configured, you're going to want to come to a computer that's on the same network, and you're going to want to download this thing called VMware vSphere Client. And basically what this is, move that so you can see it, basically what this is, is it is a way to log into your server. Um, your default username will be root, unless you change it, and your password is what you set. So you go ahead and log into there. And this allows you to do lots of things. It allows you to monitor, so you can go to configuration, you can monitor everything. In this case, let's see get closer here. There we go. Um, in this case, everything is normal. So you can view your processor health. You can view your, everything about that. Um, you can view your memory. Not much to see on that. Your fan. You can monitor the fan speeds. Temperature. Temperature, it, it, it was a kind of a bummer for me because I always like to see the core temperatures of everything. And unfortunately, the Xeons do not, or at least this model of Xeon, you cannot monitor the temperature. You can only monitor the ambient board temperature. Uh, but that does a fairly good job of saying how healthy it is. So, uh, 26 degrees, that's only like one degree above ambient in my room right now. So that's that's fine. Um, you can also view your power. If a disk fails, you have your storage. Here's my, my data store array. Um, you got a couple other things to view. But, so you can view all that. Give you performance and up here out of screen of course there is a drop down here let me just back this up um, there we go so up here there is a uh, you can drop down menu where you can view the CPU usage the data store um, network you can view your memory all kinds of good stuff your power the power doesn't really work I don't know if it's something I have configured wrong or what but that's all right. Um, so you give you your summary, a couple different, you know, helpful info, info here. So CPU usage, memory usage, uh, a couple things. So now we're going to talk about virtual machines. Uh, you're probably wondering what a virtual machine is if you don't know. Virtual machine is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically a virtual computer inside a single host. You can have multiple virtual machines, which makes it very beneficial for high performance servers. The server has eight cores, and you know, there's really nothing. Well, there is stuff that, that uses eight cores, but there's nothing that I'm going to use that's going to use all eight cores. Um, so, what we want to do is we want to break that up. So, the great thing about this, like I said, is that if you have a high performance server with five terabytes of storage and eight cores and 32 gigabytes of memory, you can allocate different parts of that to different systems. So in this case, I have a little web server running uh, for the website. That's going to be taken down soon because I'm going to college. But I have a file server, so an FTP server, and I have an Apache server running on here. And if I access the site, I access the site, here it is, very simple little site I have. If I access that, you can see a little, a little teeny bump in there. So it really doesn't use, if I just keep refreshing the page here, it really doesn't use that much. Uh, the file server doesn't use much either. The only thing that really taxes this is when I'm copying huge amount of files over the local network at like 100 megabytes a second. But other than that, this is plenty sufficient for, for that. Uh, this is why virtual machines are so nice, because if I wanted to host a web server, 8 cores would be completely overkill. Um, so there's that, and that's running Windows Server 2008 R2. I also have a game server VM. Uh, right now it's just running the Chivalry server. It usually runs quite a bit more. Uh, the nice thing about this is that it ran 24-7. You can see all the different things I had running here. Um, but this has 4 cores and 16 gigabytes of memory. So this requires a bit more processing power because when you have a lot of multiplayer uh, servers running, it does, especially some of the unoptimized ones, it does require quite a bit of CPU usage. I know Space Engineers requires a lot, and the Rust servers were just 
Oh, Jesus, they're just so poorly optimized. It was unprecedented. Idling with no one connected. It used, like, 20% of this. It was outrageous. And it only used one core, of course. Uh, most of these don't take advantage of multi-threading. Or multi-threads. So, so yeah, that, that, that's a game server. Um, so you can you can deploy quite a bit of, of virtual machines, depending on what you want to do. I had a Backtrack server on here. I had a Linux server... Uh, I was doing some home PC backups, so like everything on my network would back up to this at one point. I also had a Windows, um, Windows 7 host I could connect to, so if I was at like you know school or something, I could connect to this. Like I'd say they, had, they I was trying to do research or something, and they blocked the site or something, something stupid. Obviously, I couldn't watch like YouTube or something because it would be too slow. But if I was browsing a web page. I could easily just log on to here, because they don't block these ports. Log on to here, and then just open this console up on my computer, and voila, I have a unblocked everything, because it's on my home network. Uh, this is the power failure for the UPS virtual machine. Um, this basically allows you to uh, connect to the UPS, so if the power goes out, you can set all these settings, and the, uh, they have a little web, what is it? It's some kind of website, like it's on your local network, it's the local IP. But you connect to it, you can set all these settings, so in this case I have it set. So if the power is out for more than 10 minutes, then it it shuts, it gracefully shuts down all the virtual machines, and shuts down the host. Extremely, extremely, extremely nice feature to have, because otherwise you can have, um, you can have all kinds of data corruption, and that's, that's not, not what you want. So... So that, that's pretty much all I can tell you about this. I mean, I can show you how to deploy a virtual machine, but that's just going to eat up more time. And that's really not going to be beneficial, because you can just, you can see better videos about that elsewhere. Um, but yeah, so you can, you can see all the resource allocation. I mean, there's really not much to tell. But extremely nice if you're looking to doing, uh, you know, some kind of server hosting. Um, and you can even run this, I had this running on a really old crappy desktop, um, in fact it's still on there, it's, it's just not running, I might, I might actually turn that back on, when I go off to college, just to have a basic file server, but, uh, but yeah, so th that's pretty much it, that's about all I can tell you about this, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment, um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I see it, uh. But yeah, that, that's that's pretty much all I got on this. So yeah, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm going to be going off to college in about two weeks. So I may or may not make more videos then. Probably. I'll probably have some videos to give, to give you guys. So anyway, that is that. And I will catch you guys later. See you.